Good to see you. Uh, good to see some familiar faces haven't seen in a while. So lovely. Forgot to send out a link this morning, but you know, it's the way it goes. So I'm glad you all made it here from the other ones. So I thought I'd start today with um, this brief passage from Lala in Naked Song, a female mystic long ago. I wearied myself searching for the friend with efforts beyond my strength. I came to the door and saw how powerfully the locks were bolted and the longing in me became that strong. And then I saw that I was gazing from within the presence. With that waiting and in giving up all trying, only then did Lala flow out from where I knelt. One more time. I wearied myself searching for the friend with efforts beyond my strength. I came to the door and saw how powerfully the locks were bolted and the longing in me became that strong. And then I saw that I was gazing from within the presence. With that waiting and in giving up all trying, only then did Lala flow out from where I knelt? Lala, Naked Song. So I love that the work allows us to gaze out from within the present as we imagine not having our stressful thought and wonder and curiosity, touch it with curiosity and find that whatever it feels like. Welcome everybody. So what are you noticing has brought stress to your life, to your mind, no matter where it is? You know, I love that we have no shame or even if there is shame, we say it anyway, even if it feels childish and harsh and wrong and judgy and all of it. We start there. What a relief to start there. No need to get someplace different. We just start where we are with it. So what are you noticing or situations or anything where you see, I don't like it. This shouldn't be happening. I don't like the way that went. That person's doing it wrong. And I know we can also have those thoughts about ourselves so often. Almost every time we're thinking about somebody else doing it wrong or something happening difficult out there, it's also at ourselves. But looking out, like, so just in case, just in case you're somebody who thinks about what it's like for yourself and how you're doing it wrong, so common. To see how you know that, you know, if you were just kind of in a complete silo or bubble or the world all by yourself, or like the way you were maybe when you were born, you wouldn't have those thoughts about you doing it wrong. You have to bump into the world to begin to have the thoughts about yourself doing it the wrong way. There has to be some kind of comparison, I find. Byron Katie often asks us always to turn ourselves outward, look outside. And not every time, it's okay. But just to see if you do have thoughts about yourself, like in what situation, how do I know that? Who's around? Who agrees with me? What's happening there? And, you know, you can't do it wrong. It's just watching the thoughts here. 
So what are you noticing? What situations where there it is happening and you get that tightness inside, fear, disappointment, sadness. Noticing you don't like it. And if you like, you can share out loud this, you know, we'll just take a few, it's okay to share and you can even put it in the chat. Always got sort of an active chat thing going. A situation where, or several, <laughs> no limit. So do you want us to just talk? Yeah, share. <clears throat> Well, my situation is this morning, um, well, actually, the, it was it was yesterday watching the news of the war. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And just, um, just devastated yeah. because the war is catastrophic and useless. Yeah. The war is useless. This war is catastrophic. Might be a good place to go today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mindy. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. Uh, and not only is it all that, but it brings back and triggers a lot of things in my own life about abuse. I feel like it's all it's all connected to a man that's extremely abusive. Yeah. It, looking at that violence, just watching. Yes. So I love you brought that up because you can see um, other, you know, as we look at this war that's happening and just the images, everyone's going to have seen different images. Some people will have seen the same here as you're listening, you know, but you're looking at violence. And I just love you brought that up, but it's not the first time you've ever seen violence. Yeah. Yeah. Evie's saying this war is good for nothing. It's very triggering for me. I've had to kind of scale down and turn off Alexa with the news and turn off the news, you know, just to kind of get a sense of self again. Yeah, yes. I didn't catch the Say that again. Oh, I was just telling my Alexa to be quiet because as soon as I oh. say the thing, <laughs> she starts to talk. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're joined by we're joined by Alexa. It's my roommate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's my roommate. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So Grace, um, I'm getting much more skilled at whatever is going on with my emotions or my body to not go away from it, but to be present with what's going on. And it's very liberating. Wow. The yeah. interesting thing is, is that I'm having incredibly uh, powerful dreams. And night after night, I'm stuck someplace or I'm in some situation, maybe in another dimension, or I'm, I'm, I'm on a train that's where there is evil on the train or I, I can't and I'm, I'm, I can't get out of it. I, I don't have the presence of mind in my dream to say, God help me or to, to, look, to look at that dangerous thing in the face and so I'm, I'm caught. I'm, so I'm having these nightmares night after night. That's um, interesting. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you for sharing. And sometimes I, I mean, and, and beautiful to just, you know, maybe beautiful is not quite the right word, but just that you've shared that 
that aspect of being with what is instead of uh, being so braced against it and then still watching it seem to come into your experience nightmare a nightmare which it you know that sometimes you wake up everyone's had nightmares before where you wake up and it's as if the body's doing the same thing as what you're watching on with the war that's happening yeah so i think this um, is a helpful place to go yeah ludo yes um one of the things I, I'm, I've been thinking about often over the last few days since the war started in, in Ukraine is that I'd like someone to get rid of Putin. I mean, quite honestly, I know, I know it's terrible, but I just, and I don't, I'm not sure I'm alone in this, but um, oh, anyway, okay. I think, yeah. I, I just, sometimes I just hope they get rid of him physically because he's creating so much trouble and he's, he's put all of us in danger. And so... Yes. Just wishing he he got out of the way. Yeah. So great to just see that come up. It the the thought went through my mind, like, well, how would this be solved? Maybe he should just be assassinated. I mean, it went through my head. <laughs> you know, like is somebody thinking that? Like, uh, you know, so it's okay. It's just like watch that the mind immediately is going to work to try to resolve or solve or make it stop. So I love you brought that up. It's like number two on the judge your neighbor. How do I want this person to change? I want them to die. I want them to be eliminated. Yeah, Mari. I, I think I think the thing is that there's it's just not him thinking that way. I think there's a lot of people in the world that that have those same ideas and thoughts. They just probably haven't put them into um, into play sure yes yes you know otherwise yeah. when you think that something would have already happened to him you know yes yeah well just to see how that it like that that flow of the mind that this is a, a familiar it's not as if we're kind of saying i'm shocked this has ever happened before it's happened before it seems we remember yeah for me I could never think how that person's thinking because, and I, I'm talking about this in um, past experience because uh -huh. my ex-husband um, really comes out to like how he's thinking because yeah. he's actually said certain things. He's a mad man. I've always said my ex-husband was a mad man. And so what I'm saying here is that um, there's not just that one. I, see, I can't think that way because I can't go there. I'm just not that way. Yeah. I was never raised that way. But yeah. a lot of people have. And, you yeah. know, that's the hard part is, yeah. is to think that there's people like that. Sure, sure. No, thank you for sharing that. It's kind of just watching. Oh, I don't even know if that would help. And look at this. And I've experienced it before. And there's lots of people with a violent attitude or war. You know, like how Evie said, this war is good for nothing. Okay. I think. Grace. Uh, yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm also in Europe. And. Um, when I first, we were talking about it a couple months ago with my family, I, I just got really scared, like what could happen? And, and then I realized, you know, the reason I'm scared is because this is affecting me. I mean, I think it has potential to invade Europe or the whole thing and how crazy it is because there are other wars going on. It just, it just made me feel like I'm getting really upset about this, um, but it's very, it's just because it affects me. And yeah, I'm not getting upset about the other wars. Oh yeah, when you see something. But yeah. then the second thing was, um, I started thinking, well, yeah, what kind of rockets am I sending to, you know, when I judge somebody or when I judge myself and I started thinking okay I'm going to really take this time 
to examine where am I sending rockets? You know, where do I want to get rid of somebody myself? Or, or what am I so angry at about myself and stuff like that? And, and I guess when you ask today, um, who's doing it wrong? I feel like that every day, well, not every day, like if I go to work, but when I'm at home, I, I continually, continually say to myself, I, I'm not doing the right thing or I'm doing it wrong. Like I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. When I'm doing something, I already see that I'm not doing something else. And I think that's really attacking and very self-defeating. Yeah. Thank you for letting me talk. Oh, thanks for sharing that. It's like watching attack energy, war energy. Isn't that what we're looking at? Speaking of, as we did in the beginning, and somebody shared here too, I think it was Kim, I'm never going to get this right. You know, like just seeing that appear and the tightness. Yeah. Where am I sending rockets? Where am I bombing? Where am I believing in violence or terrified of violence? Either side, you know, terrified of it. Yeah, Marie Francois. Hi, uh, good morning. morning. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're doing an actual process, but um, right now. Um, kind of finding our, finding our thought about um, which it turns out is just looking at wrongness out there and war was mentioned, you know, war, violence, whether wherever it is, but Ukraine, of course, because that's happening and also towards the self. Hmm. Well, I'm going to play and um, the situation is that it's set, in, it's set actually during the war, but World War II. Wow. And, um, but I, I'm playing a woman who, uh, is a woman of color, a black woman in 1940s England who takes in a child who, when they had to send the kids to the country during the war for the bombing from London, they sent all the kids to the, to the, to the countryside. Wow. And I get this little uh, mixed race girl. The thing is, is that when I took this on, I thought it was a true story and I thought more black people were involved. But it turns out that it's the writer is a, a British guy, a white man, and the director is this white woman, and she's trying to make it where the black woman is just this mean, evil person for no reason to a child. And it's not even there in the script. And I'm trying to figure out how to handle this where mm. I can still do my job because I'm replacing somebody, actually. The first actress left. Hmm. Wow. So what I'm replacing a, someone and I'm just trying to figure this out where mm -hmm. I don't come out because sometimes people project, well, <laughs> all the time, right? People project their stuff onto you. Uh -huh. So I, I don't want to be the fall guy for this. And I feel like in my own history, there's a tendency for me to fall into the scapegoat victim role. And I don't want to do that this time. Wonderful. Uh, but like but at the same time, I feel like I'm fighting this woman and, and it's not really working out and I can't get yeah. her to see the point of view. It's like yeah. black people should be the expert on black people. And <laughs> uh -huh. right. Yes. But because she's the director, she doesn't think she has to listen to us. Yeah. Wow. And so I, I love your situation because there's a director. <laughs> this is like a little mini play in the world. And there is a, I know it's, you know, like there's a war happening, it, just the feel of that. I don't mm -hmm. like it. I'm against it. She's trying to get me to do something. And just uh, what a great situation to hold in this. We'll look at in So yeah, just hold that and look at that director. That director is the one that feels like the one who's not doing it the way you want it to do. Confusing, you know, need to get her to change. This needs to Yes. Happen. And she's giving us line readings and, and telling us how to feel and be. And it's just, it's like, um, that's not yeah. the job. Do you want to get on stage or? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, it's a collaborative yeah. process, you know, Perfect. and I just, Perfect. it's really, I'm not quite sure how to handle this right now. Yeah. Well, um, we'll see what happens. Let's 
let's do the work. You hold that, even if other people are holding Putin and, you know, like just we'll all share in this collective inquiry where you've got like that person's doing it and they really should stop. Right. Should stop. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's really this yeah. uh, violence needs to stop. This attitude needs to stop. This aggression, it needs to stop. Yeah, she's very aggressive. She's very like very it's so good. Okay. Yes. So there okay. she is. Yeah. You're, that's your person. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. I love that you're here. It's awesome. Okay. So everybody find that, you know, you just see this violence needs to stop. This aggression needs to stop. And you look at the person you've got there. They need to stop that. All those people in the world, like if you've got a whole lineup, you know, as you look at an assembly, fills a giant theater, maybe stadium, all the people who've ever done that, that are like that. But you see your, identify yours that are, they're being aggressive, whether it's their language and the tone and the pushing, the demand, or they're actually bombing countries or sending out rockets. And let's look, you know, let's look because noticing the feeling of, I don't know what to do. I don't know how, I don't know how to be with this. I can't convince them to stop. I can't make it end, it seems. So just that dilemma holding it. Okay, you see that happening the images that we've seen lately, the moments you've been in contact with that person, those people, maybe it goes way back in time, the pushing that they're doing. So I need them to stop being violent, aggressive, pushing. Is it true? It might seem like, yeah, of course it is. You just notice. Can you absolutely know it? So just say, can you absolutely know? I love you get to ask this one twice. Just see, oh yeah, I need him to stop. Who would say no to that? <laughs> says your mind, maybe. <laughs> it doesn't look good. Can you absolutely know? I love this question doesn't mean I'm in favor of it. It doesn't mean I agree with it or condone it or say that it's the right thing to be doing. It's just simply can you absolutely know that it's true? I need them to stop this aggression. Yeah, I love Kim sharing yes and yes. <laughs> okay to notice whatever, there's no wrong answer. Mindy finding a yes, but then a no. And Eleni, a no. So just see what happens in your, just as you watch that answer come from within, what happens when you think, I need them to stop this aggression? And for those just joining, you know, it's, there's a person whether it's a politician or a parent or a friend or a sibling, those people. 
I need them to stop this aggression. I need to stop the violence, them to stop the violence. What happens when you think that thought? It's okay if you're just looking at somebody like Marie Francois just, it's just got a tone like she just described. I need them to stop. What happens? when you think it, when you're believing it. How do you react? And okay to share in the chat, of course, and okay to pop off mute and share your answer. And Eleni, with aggression, that's how I react. And with righteousness. I feel sad mm. and upset and it's affecting my heart. Yeah. You feel that. Him sharing, I feel really afraid. I feel like I need to run, make a plan, protect myself attack back before they attack me. Mindy, sick stomach, angry, sad. Evie, I blame him, I attack him, I make him wrong, I'm right. I'm anxious. I'm out of there. Yeah, you see those words coming through. I will never speak to this person again. I will <clears throat> never be around them again. I feel it's a nightmare. That's so good, Nudo. Speaking of nightmares like we did at the beginning. This is a nightmare. Compare him to others. And you might see catastrophic images. Like, is this the end of civilization? I had that go through my head. Oh, is this the way it go, that it, it ends? Swatch, you know. I look for my allies. Good one. Who can join me? Who's my safe safety people? I gather evidence against him. Andy, I'm I'm wondering if I'd be grateful if this world awakening sickening scene finally does wake us all up so that all kind of attacks stop. Yeah, maybe this is the last one because it's so awful and it'll be over. Finally, everybody will get it. Like something will happen. I'm just seeing all the images that come in quickly. Thank you, Eleni. Question three, how do we react when you believe the thought? I need the violence and aggression to stop in from that person just looking over there. I need them to stop it. And just looking to how far back it goes when did it first ever occur to you? There's violence or aggression or some kind of yeah, aggressing, being, having, watching, observing aggression, anger. I'm unable to feel peaceful, strong, centered, calm, Eleni. 
And Mindy, I see the children and family separated and alone. I can't see how it might serve them. A new life in a new land. Helpful to see, I find, uh, I begin to think all forms of anger are wrong. The feeling itself of anger or aggression should never be there. It's a dangerous feeling. Just notice if you've had that thought, I have. Marie, my dad, my ex, and now my daughter. I see images of them and Evie from age three, I watched as my father hit my mother and siblings, grew up frightened and disconnecting from men. Yeah, it's to be on the safe side, well, just feeling disconnected. Kim, I feel anxious, panicky, and afraid of what's going to happen next. I'm seeing this as a memory as a child with the parents who were fighting against each other, and I'm witnessing it. I'm scared as hell. Yeah, you're just observing. It's not even at you, but it's loud, frightening, unexpected. I treat the resistance with resistance. So okay to notice all that coming. And seeing the scenes on TV, just aware. So who would you be without the story? And let's say it's safe to be without the story. I can notice how sometimes in, in the violence, <clears throat> I need to keep this story even though it's frightening. Otherwise it could be worse, terribly unsafe. I'll get surprised. But let's say it's safe to not have the story or it's okay to notice if your mind is nervous about that not having the thought it's okay to notice it it's a mind trying to protect and fill in in reaction just noticing and then he shares i shame myself for feeling this way now when i'm in question three how i treat myself psh, telling myself i shouldn't feel the way i feel or i feel ashamed Ah, Anne, this is a good one. I'm working on the tract homes that are creeping across the landscape and covering the beautiful fields and streams, killing the wildlife. It feels like an army advancing and killing me and the loved ones, and there's nothing I can do. No one else who even seems to mind or speak for the ones whose homes are being taken, who have no voice, my loved ones, the animals, the plants, the nature, I feel like the only option is to numb and turn away. Yeah. Powerful observation. How you treat yourself. I, I can do nothing here. Just have to go numb. I feel like Grace, if I yeah. if I let go of that thought, the aggression, the aggressor should stop. It's it feels like it's um, not doing justice to the people who are getting hurt. Yeah, it feels it feels unkind to them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I love this one. It's so helpful to see if I'm still looking and I'm right there with the violent, the one seeming to, to enact the violence, there they are. And there's the ones with aggression placed on them. 
and I'm still very close to it. I'm staying close to it. Like I care, I care about this. In other words, it's okay to watch that impulse to want to turn away or get numb or feel so hopeless about it. I'm still right in it. And Marie also noticing helpless, helpless, staying connected you know, without the story. Nothing I can do, helpless, impossible. Don't have to know how that would look. Without that, I don't care. Just being at all. And Anne, I feel like doing nothing is disloyal and irresponsible. I feel responsible to save them. But I see no way to make a difference. And Marie Francois, I feel intimidated with the thought. Yeah. I kind of, I can I notice I avoid watching the news or any posts on social media. And when I'm triggered with my kids fighting against each other, even, yes, I get loud. I try to stop them. I'm noticing I'm just trying to avoid all these fears that are rising. I don't want to feel them. So I want to stop whatever's causing the fear. <laughs> the director is forcing a confrontation. I just love that sentence, Marie Francois. There's the director. <laughs> There's the politician. There's the aggressor forcing a confrontation. I feel guilty, it's Ludo. I'm suffering like I have felt in the past. My heart's broken. I'm feeling like I'm too cowardly to handle this. Oh, so good to see. Okay, so turning the attention to it, just watching that still flow in, all those ideas like, oh my God, I, I can't do anything. I'm too cowardly, I don't know what to do. It's okay if you don't know what to do. You don't need to know how to do it. Just wondering who you'd be without the story. They need the violence. I need them to stop the aggression. Stop the fighting. Stop the violence. And I'm right. I'm in there up close because I do my heart, my heart cares about this. I'm, I'm close to this. Without all that story about I'm not enough, they're too much. If you couldn't believe that. And it doesn't mean not getting your body to safety if that's what needs to happen contributing, just aware, without the story. Yeah, you can share out loud if you like. I, I suddenly saw that the, how the aggressors are, are all, are like victims themselves that they're consumed and they're 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 acting like puppets um, yeah. yeah like really looking at those aggressors they sure don't look peaceful or happy they look like how victims look they look like people who've been attacked. They look like people who have tight fists, another, you know, afraid. It has to go the way I want it. <laughs> and Maria, more happy without the thought. Good to see. Touching happiness. You know, just being able to touch the peace.
piece that might be present also here. And Anne, what I ended up doing is driving a little further out into the country. I found some baby goats that had just been born. They still had their umbilical cords dangling down. I spent about 20 minutes with them and I cried with them. So sweet. I savored their sweetness and beauty. I saw a wild bunny and the green hills. I let myself love them and feel sad about others. I love how it just, that's what happened. Oh, a little farther, a little farther into peace. And the people building the houses are trying to feed their families. Trying to gather up supplies, <laughs> security, freedom, like people think money brings. And maybe all of this contrast is here for a reason that I can't understand. Maybe my heart is being broken open for a reason. I love just wondering, maybe, uh, you know, isn't it nice to notice I don't, it's okay to have my heart broken open. There's something incredibly full about that. I don't wanna be just walking around with it, a closed heart or a really tight, tight heart, protected heart. Marie Francoise, I would just interpret and express the character according to my instincts. I would feel free yeah, free. Imagine bringing that freedom in and then just bring it in while you think about the director and being in the presence of the director and looking right there at the director. I'm free. I'm free. She's free. Maybe we're going into turnarounds there, but Evie, I become the witness. I'm witnessing him, wondering what's going on for him. I feel curious. The medicine of curiosity, so powerful. I am light and loving. This moment feels healing, like a calling home to truth. Look, wake up, reality. You're safe, Evie. And Anne, the people are building houses just like the foxes and the bunnies. <laughs> That's a turnaround. <laughs> yeah. And Kim, I don't know who I would be. I don't know who I'd be without the story. It's like noticing just the difference between I don't know who I'd be and just staying there and feeling what it's like to bring down the shield of protection and just looking. It's so wonderful to be able to look after, like, you know, you're safe right here in this moment, looking, you're safe right now. So I'm just looking at a, an image and it's okay if I might see the image again and it's underway, it's the war. Who would I be without the story? This is impossible, hopeless, all of it, beautiful things that you're finding. I don't know, I don't know, and I care, I care. I care about this. I need to stop the aggression, and the violence against myself in this situation. whatever that means to you in the moment that I see this and see it the way I'm seeing it that feels so tight constricted am I doing something inside here my thinking is is it my thinking or the person my thinking about this situation is violent frightening aggressive Certainly seeing, I, I don't think little old me is enough. 
could that be aggressive against me? I need to stop that. Maria would go out to lunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I would go and I would feed this body and I would celebrate this moment. Allison, I would let the other have their own expression. I love that word, let, you know, it's like you see, oh, in the mind it's going, don't, no, oh, just let it be, you know, letting it be the way it is. There they are. Knowing it's temporary, it doesn't mean we have to like it, but it is, it's just like booming coming out of someone who's frightened, who's grabbing, being aggressive. Send out rockets of light and love. So great. Yeah, so those rockets. Noticing how it's a, it's such a powerful thing to be looking at. Like, look at all of that. Wow, I love the image sending out rockets of light and love. I see, I see that there are different reactions. Like there's some people who are staying there and fighting to the end. And there's some people who are going, who are fleeing. It's like they're teaching me. Beautiful. Like all the aspects of humanity, they're doing, they're doing what I do inside, you know? I mean, I get it, they're human beings and trusting they're doing what they need to do or what they are called to do in the situation. There's probably some people hiding too, <laughs> not moving at all, all okay. And some people wondering, being, mm. Marie Francois, I would calmly express my point of view that my character would not behave that way and not do it. I have an alternative to show. Yeah. Isn't that, it's really quite. Can I, yeah. can I ask you where, where we are? Are we on four? Yes, and then it's sort of, God, it's a life of its own. I've, I'm hearing some turnarounds happening. So just being with that question four, who would I be without the story? And let's go ahead and turn it around. Yeah, I love you asked that, Marie. Okay, Marie. thank you. Yes, so I need to stop the violence and aggression on myself as I'm standing in this situation, as I'm being in this situation, is there a little drop of aggression that I put on myself, whether it was showing up as shame or thinking that I'm nothing, I'm little old me is just nothing that can do anything here. And I need to stop that. And it doesn't mean I don't step away or leave. <laughs> so just seeing that. And people were finding a bit like watching if they hold that turnaround and feel it. Yeah, Evie, with that thought, I've got myself into this situation. I'm bad, wrong, and evil. I need to let go of I'm bad, wrong, and evil. I'm just doing what human beings do, what my mind has been thinking is the best option and solution. And I can hold a new one here. I can stop believing in the aggression towards myself. I should stop doing that. I need to stop doing that. I need to stop. I need to stop. okay if 
if your mind is like mine, you go, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And just seeing the feeling of rest or relaxation. Yeah, Mindy, beautiful. By breathing in and by doing the work. Yeah. Breathing, a deep breath. Amazing. It just comes. I need to stop. So holding my own fists, you know, just relaxing them. I love that image. And and whoever shared not sending the rockets out. We're sending the rockets out of light and love. So that's a great turnaround to the other. I need to stop aggressing against the other, calling them wrong, bad, evil. I can do that from here. I send out rockets of love. <laughs> just love we brought in the word rockets. Just the image, you know, of this big ball of white light with a rock with a point on the end of it towards that person, which I find naturally happens as we sit and do the work right now. Like who knows what that does? I need to stop aggressing, being violent, just in the energy, aggressive energy toward that other. It's so compassionate. Like a prayer, okay, that rises. And something might come that I can do, depending on the situation you're thinking about, whoever's there, if there's somebody close, whatever it is. Maybe I say, I really need to have a private conversation with you, or, or uh, I need to have a mediated conversation with you. Uh, what can I do? Just open. What can I do? My husband and I have a dance every, every single Saturday for many years, nine years or something. And even during the pandemic, we did it online. We just had a set list that we played. Now we're back in person with masks on, but we, we danced together <laughs> again in person. We played Ukrainian music last Saturday. It was beautiful. It felt like something we could offer. Who knows what comes? How can I be open, even if I'm afraid? Yeah, something, something there. If I'm not saying I'm so small, there's nothing. Who would I be without my story in that turnaround? I can stop the violence towards them, towards myself, towards them. And maybe we'll play Russian music this weekend. So there's that too. So the turnaround, it doesn't need to stop for me to be happy, for me to offer love, for me to have my heart broken open. This violence doesn't need to stop. Um, if it was in the past that you're looking at, it's underway, notice you're still present. Something is here like the poem, the passage that I read at the very beginning. Something still here, present, aware, offering, powerful, 
they don't actually need to stop. and noticing they do stop. That one person stops. Just whatever feels, what you can find there, what you can find. The violence doesn't need to stop from out there. There's peace holding all of it. There's a sense of peace. I can touch that. And it has to be what fits for you, doesn't it? it? It can't be making it up like I'm trying to be open here. It's just the tiniest bit that you can find noticing even if in heartbreak, even if you're crying with what you see. There is something that's still present anyway. Anyone want to share anything that they found here before I read the, the same passage again that we had at the beginning? Seems to fit today. It'll be exciting to see what happens. You know, if the word isn't quite exciting, I'm open. I'm open to seeing as I draw in the power of love, as I feel it or as it's present. Even if my mind says it isn't, I'm just noticing here, here. So, Love that you've all been here today, but let's hear from Lala again, this mystic that lived whenever. And I love that. Thank you, <laughs> sharing. I'm wanting to and open to see that we are all one. And Anne, maybe we are all opening or softening in some important way, building our empathy. The world, the beauty of the world, of the whole world, wanting to help and feeling brokenhearted together. Yeah. Yeah. So Lala, it's from Naked Song. I wearied myself searching for the friend with efforts beyond my strength. I came to the door and saw how powerfully the locks were bolted. And the longing in me became that strong. And then I saw that I was gazing from within the presence. With that waiting and in giving up all trying, only then did Lala flow out from where I knelt? Mindy, thank you so much for this inquiry. It was very helpful to be grounded here with this whole group. Um, rest? Yeah. Excuse me. Could you give us the name of the mystic and the poet who, from oh, whom you're yes. quoting? I'll put thank it. you. Yeah. Beautiful words, so I was just I curious. Yes, yeah. Lala from Naked Song, but I'll write it in the chat. Thank you. Oh, yes. 
and Kim, I'm trying to find who I would be and I'm in the I don't know and I think I'm afraid of who I would be. <laughs> yes. Okay to watch. Just let it stay. Let it be there as long as it is, you know, no rushing. Don't have to hurry it. Hurry it along. And Marie Francoise learning how to approach things in a new way and still not sure if I should bring it up. Yes, of course. Uh, bring it up first or just do it and take the fall for it. Maybe I don't need to know until the time comes. That's wise, you know. Um, Marie Francoise, you and your character are perfect. <laughs> Very sweet, yes. I love it. Don't you love it? A character, a real character. Somebody's doing the work on this character. And in some ways, there's all these characters and the ones that are you know, violent in the world and just noticing. So thank you all for, for sharing this. I look forward to hearing what happens if you'd like to share your, in living your turnaround, what comes. You'd be surprised at what's possible. I'm willing to have this happen. I'm willing to have this underway. I look forward to this happening. Hard to imagine, but just allowing that to be, letting that be percolating in here. Mindy, I'm willing to open to love the aggressive one within me and in others. You know, there's a place for that tight, zapping energy. And it can be an opening to heartbreaking love. Thank you all so much. You can uh, take yourself off mute to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank good you, to be with all of you. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, lots of love, everyone. <laughs>